Well, hi guys. I got an email from a friend who is another Aspie that I met online, and there was a comment in there about language, and um, I'm thinking, and I want to try and explain something. I've, God, I've been wanting to do a video about this for a while, but I just don't know how to explain it. So I'm just going to try, and we'll see how it goes. As you're listening, especially if you're not on the autism spectrum, I would like to encourage you to try and think outside the box a little bit because it's not something that people can understand, but I don't know, maybe you could try. So, <sighs> language. So, first of all, I've been told by people that I'm very articulate and this is what I think about that and what I know. For me, words, sentences, language is a tool. It's something that I use to try and connect my inside to others. I don't think it's like this with neurotypicals. I think it's just part of who they are and I can't understand their brains, so I don't know for sure. But how it is, is the words are like a bridge. And it's like there's me, my understanding of myself in the world, and I guess you can call it the autistic language. Like, wouldn't that be nice if we could call it the autistic language? Because it doesn't really have language to it. But anyway, so there's that, and it's like there's all these things on the inside, and there's no way I can express that in my native language or artistic language. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these, this thing called words, and I'm going in, and I'm thinking, hmm, what are the closest words that I can find that explain this or explain that what I'm seeing in the world I think I probably communicate maybe 50% of what I want to communicate oh, gosh I don't know if this is making any sense it's like the person speaking is the translator for the, the person, the real me on the inside. So there's me, and there's what I feel, what I know, what I see, what I experience. And there's a way of understanding the world, and a way of thinking which doesn't involve words. But obviously, that won't work to be able to connect or express ideas. I think art sometimes can do that. Like, I've done art therapy, and I feel like that bypasses that need. You know, like, the art helps me a little bit more express what's going on on the inside, or what I see, what I experience. So, I think to kind of survive and somehow be heard and known, I had to really hone the use of words. It's interesting, when I studied in Spain, the lady that I lived with, who was Spanish, she would say, your Spanish is better than mine. But, you know, the reality was, it was, again, just a tool. I wasn't good at, like, colloquial Spanish. Um, but I had honed the use of the words. And the reality was, I never fully communicated myself. You know, I know I didn't. I knew there was always a gap. But anyway, back to kind of my first spoken language, which is English. Um, I, I'm hyperlexic, which means I taught myself to read. And I believe that has to do with my pattern-oriented mind. I am within the top 1%, like less than the top 1%, 0.5% or something. So for me, that's what words are. It's all patterns. So the, the words are patterns of letters, the sentences are patterns of words, paragraphs are patterns of sentences. I have a little hard time with when I start to get to the paragraph, 
paragraph level. Like I can't fully understand, but my bright my mind's always going and it's like finding these patterns. Um, so yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. When I had a dog, um, and I had an amazing dog. She, we were like soulmates, and we had so much in common, and it was just such an amazing thing. She was just very special. I could communicate with her in a different way. I didn't, I used words with her sometimes, but it was different. And I always thought, my God, if I could be able to communicate with humans the way I communicate with her, it would be so nice. You know, with her, there was just a knowing there. I mean, obviously Temple Grandin, you know, she is able to see things and experience animals in a way that other people can't. That's how she communicates. So, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, just that, I guess it's in the vein of people maybe trying to understand us. So, if you can understand that, the words I'm using are not ever fully communicating what I'm experiencing, needing, feeling, etc. But that they're, it's like one layer removed from my true self. Um, yeah. I used to tell my therapist how hard it was to go to therapy and have to talk. Because I, I would tell her, I'm like, I, it's work. It is work for me. Um, because it's like, I have to somehow, like, it's like there's a door, and I can't, it's hard to get in that door, and then, but, but not only that, it's like the, there's no words to describe it, so I know I'm feeling miserably, and then I just feel frustrated and upset. You're trying desperately to be understood, and you're not, and you know you're failing, and I think I've in some ways kind of given up on the idea of therapy because, or at least anything that involves words, maybe, you know, art therapy or something like that, because it's just, I feel miserably at it. Um, it's not like I can let the therapist just do the work because it's work for me. Um, and it's exhausting and I think ineffective. Hmm. Now I have no words at the moment. I mean, I it's actually I have a lot to say, but I'm struggling with my translator is I guess uh, kind of like I've got a poor wireless connection. <laughs> you know, it's intermittent, and I'm trying to explain something that's so complicated that there really are no words for. I mean, okay, here's what came up for me, like sort of like God. Like, there are no words to describe God. It, it's something that you can't understand or explain. Um, there are no words to describe it because it doesn't exist within the, the world of words. I think I use analogy a lot. That's one thing I try and do. I know in my videos I'll try and say, well, it's sort of like this. You know, that's one way I try and communicate and be understood. I did a video recently on people saying um, to autistics, but you don't seem autistic. And one of the ways I was able to communicate is by comparing it to what uh, people in other groups go through. Again, I'm feeling miserably. It might not seem like it. it. You might hear it and go, oh, that's a really logical argument, and oh, I can see your point of view. But I am only communicating a portion of what I really think and feel. And I have to live with that. I just figure if I can just at least open up that door a little and get people thinking about things differently, great. Or even that, that's not even so much getting them to think about it differently. I guess it's just 
because that's really not none of my business what anybody thinks it's more just sharing my experience and who I am to the best of my ability there's a video that the Aunt Mish did where it's the her kind of famous one where she says the Aspies don't have emotions and there's this one part where you can see her she's just like Ugh. like she's just I could feel that she's trying to get words out and I could feel what she was feeling at that moment and she was like so she said something like most of the time these videos are just me attempting to get a thought across and I can relate to that so much it's just an attempt and you have to live with that so hmm. I guess that's it I usually do a video and then I get like all sorts of thoughts and clarity after I don't feel like this is totally buttoned up but that's okay you know um, I'll follow up if I if I get more thoughts and I'm curious to know your thoughts. So, thanks.